going on everybody grim repair here today we're working on a ge microwave um it's not heating anything up and it makes a loud buzzing noise louder than normal anyway or i'll let you hear it kind of a weird noise i suspect it needs a magnetron and today i'm going to show you how to change it tools you're going to need are a couple phillips screwdrivers a piece of metal a screwdriver will work and some of these security torx bits on this microwave it happens to be a t20 and you're going to need a magnetron i'm going to link the parts and tools used in the video down below first thing we're going to do is unplug it we're going to come around to the back side of the microwave and there's a couple security bits here on the back that hold the housing on and then on the side we've got a couple phillips head screws here. I'm gonna go ahead and remove these. and one on this side. And this housing kind of comes in and locks into the front face plate. So to get it off, we're just gonna come around the back, lift it up and pull it backwards. And you can kind of see the tabs in there that latch onto the front. just comes right off right here is the magnetron and here's the capacitor for the magnetron it should automatically discharge itself because it's got this uh, ground here on this resistor but we want to make sure that it's it's discharged so we're gonna unplug this just keep track of where these go and we're gonna Touch the two terminals together. Uh, I said we'd use a screwdriver to do that, but since they have these plastic guards around here, I'm gonna use a pair of pliers. All right, just gonna go in there and touch them together. Now the capacitor is discharged. So we can go ahead, plug these back in. That way we don't forget where they go. And we're gonna remove the plug here on the bottom of the magnetron. There's a couple of screws holding it in and one here holding this shield on. I'm gonna be careful with the shield because we need to put it back in place. and just slide it off the back. Then we got some sc two screws on this side, one on this side. We're gonna hold it while we remove this last one. And once it's loose, we're just gonna pull the whole thing straight out, straight out towards us. Actually, you gotta lift up on it a little bit because there's these hooks here that hold onto it. So you don't have to support it. You have to lift it up a little bit, pull it out. I'm gonna set this aside. You gotta dispose of this properly. Take it to your local waste management. Be real careful with it. Now we're gonna take the new one, slide it in. 
being real careful with it. Get it hooked on those two hooks. screws back in and get them started don't tighten them all the way now that they've all been started we'll tighten the one on that side come over here do this one Get it seated in there straight. Now we're gonna put this shield back over the top here. Slide it around the Tighten that screw back down. Plug it back in down here. Now we're gonna put the case back on. Come in from the top, lock the uh, case into the front. Those tabs. There we go. Push it forward. I'm gonna put the Phillips screws in the sides first, just because. I don't really think it matters, but that's what I'm doing. Now we can put the security bits in the back side of the microwave. Now we're gonna plug it in, put a cup of hot water in there, see what happens. <clears throat> All right, now that we've got it all back together, you're supposed to do a microwave leakage test and you can pick up a leakage detector on Amazon for about 20 bucks. I don't have one, so I can't really show you how to do that right now till I get one, but uh, there should be instructions with the leakage detector. I'll link one down in the description. Um, we're just gonna test and see if it works. run it for a minute definitely sounds better we'll let it run for a minute and we'll see if that water's hot yep that's hot boiling and steaming so anyway it works that's it high five you did it thanks for watching